Hey everyone, I hope all of you are doing great. So in this lesson, we are going to talk about how to use Grafana to connect to PostgreSQL and create beautiful dashboards. So first of all, I'm going to go to virtuallabs.online and here we are just going to create a database instance of PostgreSQL. So you can search for PostgreSQL and then just click on that. And then here we have latest version available. So just select that one and then click on subscribe now. Now, once you do that, you can see a subscription is going to be created, which is going to be valid for two hours. Now you can go on and click on check details to see the details or otherwise you can also go on and here you can click on my labs to come to this page so on this page you will be able to see all the different labs which you have created and also you'll be able to manage state of those now this is currently showing under pending state so here we can click on this link and you can see it is going to take probably up to 90 seconds for the instance to be created so we are going to wait for some time okay so we have grafana up and running we can go to connections and here we can click on add new connections now here we can search for postgresql and here you can see we have postgresql let's click on that and click on add new data source now here you can give a name to this data source so let's call it demo postgresql and now here you can see we need these database details so let's go ahead and here refresh it and you can see we have now got the database details so before going on and putting these details here in the connection let's go ahead and check this and we can do that by using this pg admin url so let's go ahead and open it in a new tab and here you can see it is opening a pg admin graphical user interface which we can use to manage postgresql and here we need to provide credentials which is also available here so let's go ahead copy this username and let's paste it here and password is admin which is also available here so you can check it let's go ahead now click on login now this is your browser asking for whether you want to save the password i'm just going to close it and now here we can just go ahead and click on add new server so let's go ahead and see that our credentials are working successfully so here we are going to create a postgresql connection in pg admin and then we are also going to create demo tables which we are going to use in grafana so here we can go ahead and give it a server name i'm just going to call it pg admin demo and then we can click on connections here also we need to provide connection details which we are going to get from here so let's go ahead copy this ip address and let's go ahead paste it here port is 5432 which is the default port so we are not going to change it and here in the username we are going to change it to my user all these details are available here so here you can see username is my user and password is my password so i'm just going to go ahead copy it and here we are going to paste it now click on save and here you can see on the left hand side now we are connected to database so here you can see under the database we have my database and postgres which is a default database so we are going to connect to my database this is the one which is created for demo purpose in the lab environment now let's go ahead and click on schemas here you can see we have a pu public schema and under the tables right now we do not have any tables so we are going to create a couple of tables i do have sql query available for creating a table so let's go ahead and copy this i'm also going to paste it on github and going to give you the link so you can go ahead and use the same query which i'm using now here in pg admin we can go to tools and then we can go to query tool and let's go ahead paste the query which we have copied right now you can see query is commented so i'm just going to go ahead and make it uncomment now here you can see first query is going to create a table so i'm just going to highlight first one and then going to click here on execute script or alternatively you can also go ahead and press f5 now here we can see product table is created let's go ahead and insert some data in products table here you can see it is saying query is executed successfully it means now we should have some data in products table we can go ahead click on tools and open up a new query tool as well so we can see that in a different window or otherwise you want you can just go ahead and click here and write your query for example we can just write select star from products select this complete query then press f5 and you can see now here is the data so now let's go ahead and use the same connection and table details in grafana so here you can see this is the grafana connection which we had opened now here we need to provide connection details so i'm going to copy this ip address and then we need to provide port which is 5432 database name is my database and username is my user password is my password now here in the tls ssl mode i'm going to disable it because that's not required and then we can just scroll down click on save and test if everything is okay we should be able to see database connection okay which we are seeing right now now we can go ahead and just click on build a dashboard now this chrome browser is quite annoying it keeps on asking whether i want to save the password so anyway now let's go ahead click on add visualization 
and here you can see this is the data source which we created which is called demo postgresql now here in the tables we should be able to see all the tables which are created so here you can see we are currently able to see products table this is the one which we created and here in the columns either we can select any of the available columns or we can choose star which is going to show us all the columns now let's just click on run query once you do that you can see we are not able to visualize this data on time series so we need to switch to any other available visualization so in this case we know our data is a tabular data so we can just go ahead and select table once we do that you can see our product table is available here now we can also go ahead and enable pagination and then click on apply. So here you can see now we have pagination available and we can switch to other data. Now of course you can go ahead and apply all the available styling which is available for table panel. Now I'm not going to show that here because I have already shown all of that in a different tutorial. But let's go ahead and probably try to use some of the other available options. For example, we can go ahead and use maybe filters. Here you can see we have various categories available. So let's go ahead and click on dashboard settings. And here we are going to go ahead create a variable and then click on add a variable. And let's say we want to create a constant or probably a custom variable. So I'm just going to choose custom and we are going to call it category. And here in the label we are also going to call it category. Now here we can provide all the various available categories. For example you can see we have electronics, we have fashion, home appliances. So let's go ahead and give some of those. And now here you can see if we click on run query we can see these are the various options which are available for our selection. Now let's go ahead click on apply and we can close this variable panel. Now here we have category option available which we can choose from and once we choose that right now nothing is happening because in our query we are not really making use of this category. So let's go ahead and update this table panel. Now here you can just scroll a bit up. This is a place where we selected table and just above that you can see we have an option of selecting a filter. So let's go ahead and enable the filters. Once we enable the filters we should be able to see this additional option of choosing a filter. So we are going to select filter by column and here we are going to apply and filter and let's go ahead select the filter which is called category and this one is going to be equal to and this is going to be equal to and here we should be able to provide this variable name so here I'm just going to write dollar and we need to provide variable name which is category in this case so let's do that and click on run query okay right now I don't see the data and I guess the reason is because it is case sensitive so let's go ahead and we are going to go to dashboard settings and then let's go ahead click on the variable which we created and here I'm just going to rewrite it let's go ahead click on apply click on close and now let's go ahead select fashion so once we do that you can see now we have data available only for fashion and if I click electronic you should be able to see we have data available only for electronics now in some scenarios you may want to select multiple options so let's go ahead and do that as well here you can see we are going to go to variables and let's click on this category variables and once you scroll down here to selection options you can see we have option of multi value so we are going to enable multi value and then click on apply then close this now once we do that let's refresh it you can see once we do that we are probably going to get an error okay here you can see I'm selecting both of these items and I'm still getting error the reason for that is we need to fix our query as well because earlier we were using equal operator now in this case we probably have to use other operators because because we are making selection of selecting multiple items so let's go ahead and edit it and here let's go ahead and select any in and then let's go ahead click on apply and now we should be able to select one of the available options for example I can select fashion I can select electronics and once I do that I'm able to see the data accordingly now there is a couple of things which we need to fix for example one thing which you saw that in the categories we actually hard coded the values so we are able to see only electronics or fashion but we actually would like these values to be coming directly from the available options in the database so for example here you can see what I can do is I can go ahead and write select distinct category from products let's go ahead and run it and once you do that you can see we are able to see there is three options so let's go ahead and use this query while creating the variables so we are going to go ahead click on dashboard settings we are going to go to variables select the category variable now here rather than making it custom I'm going to go ahead and choose query now once we select query we also need to select a data source which is going to be demo postgresql in this case and then let's go ahead and paste this query here now once we do that you can see under the preview of values we are able to see these options we can of course go ahead and enable multi value again we can also go ahead and include all options let's go ahead click on apply and let's go ahead click on close now here you can see we are able to see all the category options which are 
are available. So let's go ahead and select electronics. And once we do that, we can see now we have data available only for electronics. And once we go ahead, change it to maybe fashion, it is going to show us fashion. Now let's go ahead and I'm just going to save it once. So here you can see we also have an option of selecting all. Once we select all, we should be able to see all the data. Now this is coming from variable settings where we enabled all options. Now in this case we have enabled all option but in your case you may or may not enable it depending on the kind of option which you want to provide to the user. Okay so this was a good example of table. Now let's go ahead and probably see some of the trend line or use uh, some of the trend line graph which typically you will also use in production environment. So first of all here in this table uh, for example I'm just going to go ahead and remove this going to change the query to select star from products. Now here you can see we don't really have any time column. Okay, so of course if we want to see some sort of uh, timeline, then we have to have time column as well. So let's go ahead and create another table in which we are going to also add some timeline. So here you can see I'm also having query for creating a sales table and then inserting some dummy sales data in that. So let's go ahead and use this. Now here I'm just going to go ahead and paste the queries here. So this one is commented, I'm just going to uncomment it and then going to run it. Now here you can see it is saying it is executed successfully. Now here on the left hand side you can see we have tables. So just click on tables and click on refresh. And then you should be able to see products and sales tables. These are the two tables which we created. Now we are going to use this query which is going to insert some dummy data to the sales table. Now this is inserting only one record so you might need to run it multiple times to insert multiple records. For example I executed it again. Now let's go ahead click on sales or probably we can just go ahead and write select star from sales. Now you can see we have two entries and here you can see we have a sale timestamp so it is generating the timestamp automatically. I'm just going to run it again or we can just select everything and then we can just run it a couple of times so we can see that now we have four entries and I just inserted one more entry. Now let's go ahead go to PG demo and here we are going to go ahead click on add visualization and in this case we are going to use sales table so we have time field available there so we should be able to use time series. Now I'm just going to go ahead and select sales table and in the columns we need to use timestamp column. Now remember it is available in the table but if I do not select the timestamp here I won't be able to use this uh, time series visualization. So I'm going to use uh, sales timestamp and then I'm also going to use one more column uh, which is going to be let's say number of quantity which has been sold. And then we can just click on run queries. And here you can see we have some data available. Now I'm going to change it from last six hours. I'm just going to probably change it to last 15 minutes. And you can see we have some sales which has been recorded. Now let's go ahead click on apply. And also we can change the refresh interval to let's say maybe every 10 seconds. And every 10 seconds we should be able to see refresh data. Now here I'm just going to run it a couple of times again. And we should be able to see additional data being added which you can see right now here. Again if you want to use your custom query you can go ahead and use that as well. For example let's say we want to see total number of items which has been sold as of now. In that case our query is going to be something like uh, select some of all the sales item. Okay so it is going to be something like select. Okay here you can see select sum of quantity from sales. So let's go ahead we are going to copy this query and then we are going to create another visualization and in this visualization I'm going to use stat because we just want to see total sales and then here we are going to click on code. Code is the place where you can paste your own custom code. For example let's say you have a complex query where you, you are using joins, maybe group by, having clause or maybe whatever custom query which you have you can go ahead and paste that query here then click on run query and once you do that you can see now here we are able to see 46 now this is the same data which we were seeing here in the query so let's go ahead rename it to total sales and then click on apply okay so this is how it is looking so I guess that's pretty much it for this lesson. If you have any query, please feel free to write in the comment box and I'll be more than happy to answer it. If you liked it, do not forget to write thanks in the comments and I'll see you again in the next lesson.